Hi, this is Mark with an update for the 5th of July. I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to show you how I study a pair in detail. Uh, but just before we go into that, I was saying yesterday that I was very wary with the Euro. And the problem with the Euro is the news situation, and I'll show you that in a second. But here we had, I said to you yesterday, that under normal circumstances, a break of 14500 we would have been in here, yippee, and off we go as along. And I was explaining in detail that the difficulty is at the moment, the Euro, there is so much rumour flying around and so much news. And a lot of news that normally wouldn't really have an effect is suddenly sending it one way and the other. And what did it do today? Well, hopefully I kept you out of a losing long on the Euro and on the Euro Pound. Because once again, we'd broke 90 and under normal circumstances, I showed you we would be looking to long. And I said I wouldn't because I would be very, very wary until we can start to trust the EMAs. Now, when we start thinking in terms of news, I look uh, every day at Forex Factories news. And there's some very interesting articles in here as well as a background, financial background to what's going on. But looking this morning, uh, you could see that every other news announcement on here or every other comment on here is to do with the euro. Spanish and Italian bonds decline. Trichet's had a word. Uh, Trichet's had another word. German fin finance minister's got his two penithin. It's just a constant drip drip of news, negative news, slightly positive news. We are all over the place. And you'll notice Greece, 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 all over the place. It's all about the Greek scenario. That is why I left the euro alone. Now, I tend to trade the British pound a lot. And with the British pound, if you have a look here, the only thing of interest this morning was the PMI news that was coming up. And other than that, it's been fairly light for the last few days as far as the pound goes. So you go to your calendar and on the daily calendar, have a look. And we had pound news coming up this morning. Uh, so if you're training before the news, you wouldn't want to be in a trade too soon before. The pound news came out slightly better than expected. No great fireworks and shakes there. Nothing else scheduled until three o'clock with USD factory orders. And it's not the biggest news announcement. So with the pound, news wise, we should have been fairly safe. If we go to the weekly, we were looking in terms of last week, we said, well, 160. I'm still wary today because of uh, the, just the general situation. And in truth, I've not been trading. I've been away and I'm traveling around, so it's not possible to trade. But look at this today, 160. Oh, perfect, perfect bounce. And it was multiple reasons. Again, it's a huge psychological number and it is the 55 EMA. This is my daily chart, and I've got on the daily chart, everything looks like it's turning over. Uh, long term, where's this move going to go? Well, if you've left any of the trade running, had you caught 160, then you would definitely be getting out when you get up here around 160, 180, because it may well, as per yesterday's analysis, turn back down again. Now, the way I trade is this. Now, this is not the best easiest thing for you to see at the moment because I've had to reduce the size of my screen to video this session. But what I have is I have one profile within MetaTrader where I can have all the charts on multiple time frames set up. So if I was looking on the pound this morning and I'd said right well 160 was the area because of the reasons that we've said I would then go on to a four hour chart and have a look if there are any clues in there. Well, it hit the Bollinger Band. There was nothing other than that in the way. And at 160, we did have room for a decent move up to these EMAs. On the one hour, similarly, now there was a good clue here on the one hour because what happened, price had gone outside the Bollinger Band. Now this does start to look very interesting because we know at 160, there's all this in the way. There's a good chance this is gonna bounce back off again. You then go down to a 15 minute chart and on the 15 minute chart you can see we have a pin bar candle so even if you missed the original move here 16006 we bounced off this weekly 55 EMA this is an hour and a half before the news this uh, platform is an hour and more in, an hour in front then it was worth the risk what happens then price comes up you would be looking and thinking in terms of taking your first profit off around here because it was the 15 minute EMAs and the one hour EMAs are in the same area uh, as are the four hour EMAs. So there's a lot going on in this area. 
Also, we had news coming out in the next 15 minutes. So the way I play this kind of move is take off some of the profit here, leave the balance to run, move the stop then down here below the recent lows and below all these EMAs, etc., and wait for the news to come out and cross your fingers. And as it was, this then went another 80 pips. Now, to make this a little easier for you to see, what you can do, MetaTrade is very flexible. You can move charts around, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can, if you hold your mouse down here, you can move it around. There's loads of things you can do with this, but let's move this a little smaller. So I want to look now on my one hour chart here, I have got the average daily range set up. The price then has come up from the news, it's kept going, but where you think in terms of taking your overall target off here, if you're not going to look upon this as a very long term move, then the scenario is this, we have had today more than the average day's range. We are at a double top. Therefore, there is a good chance that that will be it for today. Now, I'm recording this at lunchtime and Murphy's Law says now there'll be a huge move up, but we're working on percentages. It's double top, that would be the best area to me to take the lot off. If you then want to scale out a little bit, perhaps, and, and try to catch a bigger move, fair enough. But at the end of the day, you've had a 100 and odd pip move, 140 pip move. It's more than enough for a week's profit. That's the end of it. Get out of there. As far as tomorrow goes, I'm still exceedingly wary for all the reasons I've explained. Uh, this is the Aussie dollar. And again, I was showing you yesterday, normally we would be looking to long on here as well. That is very messy as well. As far as tomorrow goes, uh, we have big pound news uh, and it's not a specific time and it's any time over the next couple of days. It's big-ish pound news, Halifax. It's house price inflation, no real major shakes lately. Uh, other than that, the main news is for the CAD building permits and ISM PMI for the US in the afternoon. So fairly light news. Again, I would avoid the euro for the reasons I have explained. Uh, pound, I would personally prefer. Uh, and other than that, you're just going to have to watch your charts, look for the analysis where we said before, Aussie dollar too messy, as I've just said to you. I'm very, very wary with anything yen related at the moment as well. But hopefully that has given you an insight into how to study in detail before taking a trade.